Hey guys, it's Kevin Gensmeyer for the season premiere of the possible final season of Awkward Season 5, Episode 1, um, Prank Amateurs. Now, when I say possible Season 5, a lot of people, I don't think, understand that this might not be the final season. Um, going into this, I knew that. I knew this, this might not be the final season, but the, it is the end of their high school career, basically the end of the show. I don't really know how they're going to continue it after this, but I think it's going to be very interesting to see what they do. I was really looking forward to this premiere because the second half of season four, I think, really got awkward back into its groove. They had some really great storylines, and plus that season finale was incredible. I really loved the season finale last year. I thought it was very well done, and... Uh, while this does kind of just feel like a continuation of last season, I still love this premiere. I thought this was an amazing episode. I really did love it. And again, we're really getting into that theme of just how much is changing for all of them. And the days are kind of winding down at this point. I, I really like seeing that, you know, it, it's a, it's very bittersweet because, you know, we're so used to seeing Palos Hills and we only have 10 more episodes left of seeing Palos Hills. Second half of the season won't be in Palos Hills. We'll probably never see it again. It's going to be really sad, but this is the last time we can see it. And I think it's going to be very interesting. So, um, let's get into this episode. A lot happened, and I, there's a, a lot to talk about. Um, there were two plots in this episode, so I'm going to go by the different plots. The main plot, basically, is that everyone is planning on doing this senior prank, because now it's the time where they have 47 days left, um, till graduation, and, uh, basically they're trying to pull off the ultimate senior prank, I believe it was Lissa's idea to pull it off. Um, they're all stripping, and basically they plan on uh, streaking, streaking the hallways, basically, when no one's around. And I actually think that's a pretty awesome prank, I have to say. I mean, it is a little extreme, but it's not something that I couldn't see like my school doing. I could definitely see that happening, and it'd be pretty funny if it did. Um, and it seems to be going well. However, in the moment, um, basically we see Gabby is also there. She's telling Jake how she has not told Maddie yet about them having sex. And she tells him that the reason she doesn't want to tell him is because it was her first time and she hasn't had sex yet. And obviously Jake's really upset about this. And at the same time, we see that, um... Jenna still has sort of a thing going on with Brian, you know, that guy that she met in Mexico. And Tamara, meanwhile, is still in this weird engagement with Adam. You know, Jenna's kind of trying to figure out what's going on there. But basically, it all ends up going horrible once Jenna basically goes right in and she's caught by Val. And I'm like... Why is Val still there? I thought they weren't going to explain this. I, was, I thought this was going to be really a big problem for me. But luckily, they did explain what happened. And I was happy that they did do that. Because obviously, I wanted to know, why the hell is Val randomly back at school? Basically, she, as we know, she was going to, she was planning on moving in with Will and moving in with him. But once she moved in with him, they kind of lost a connection, and they didn't really have something. So she's now living at the school, and I think that's kind of interesting that Val's now uh, living at the school, and she doesn't really have a place to go. But at least Val is in her environment, and they and you, the, the reason I think they did that for two reasons. One, you knew it really wasn't going to work out between Val and Will. I mean, they didn't really have a connection other than he saved her and things like that. Um... It does feel kind of forced, but I do like it as well because we can still have that fantastic Jenna Val uh, friendship that we've always had, and I really do love that. But basically, she tells her, but because of what she's done, she's now suspended, and uh, basically, that's what's happened to her. So, um, in the meantime, we see, and I thought that was pretty interesting. So, in the meantime, we then see Maddie, who, of course, has no idea that Gabby has cheated on him. And he's talking to Jake, and Jake's still really upset because of, he didn't get into that college they really wanted to get into. And Maddie's feeling pretty confident because, you know, he has Gabby. He, uh, he's happy with her. He's kind of on top of the world right now, but, he, of course, he doesn't know that they had sex, but I will say Gabby did a very good job of covering it up. You know, she seemed like she was really into him and still wanted to be with him, and you, but you know that that's not going to last. You can tell that Gabby and Jake, they have something, and they're definitely starting to build a connection. Like, Gabby honestly seemed interested in Jake throughout this episode, which I'm not surprised by. I mean, he was the only one that really talked to her and kind of... It, he very much, he just, they kind of had this really close connection, and I thought that was definitely very interesting, and I really like seeing that. So, then we get into, um, uh, Sadie's storyline, which I thought was really interesting. I really like seeing what they did with Sadie in this episode. 
basically, Sadie and Lissa are going to see Val. Uh, Lissa is talking about how she's got her faith back because now she knows because of what her dad said to her and everything, which, I mean, that storyline was great. It's still very funny. I still really like seeing it. Um, but basically, we see that her mom is back. Sadie's mom is now back, and as we know, her mom, the last time we saw her, was not a good mom. That's obviously why she chose to live with Aunt Allie and not her mom, because of the fact that her mom is an unfit mother. She doesn't want to help her out, and she wants to reconnect with Sadie, but Sadie just doesn't want to put any effort into it. She wants nothing to do with her. It's understandable. I mean, she abandoned her, and I can understand why Sadie wants nothing to do with her, um, but basically, she just shuts her down. She doesn't want to talk to her. She doesn't want to see her, and that basically is how that goes. So, Jenna then gets home, and she catches Kevin and, uh, Kevin and Lacey, what she thinks is them having sex, but they're actually setting things up because they're gonna turn Jenna's room into a nursery because, of course, Lacey's pregnant, um, when she leaves, and Jenna obviously is kind of upset about this, um, but I like seeing that. I like seeing that we're still focusing on it, and I, like I said, I kind of like seeing Lacey, um, have this baby and how that's going to support her because now it beside now that she doesn't you know the last time when she had Jenna she was a teenager and now she can actually raise someone I mean it's it's not going to feel as awkward for her and I like seeing that definitely um but basically she then tells Lacey about what's going on with Maddie and that she's really not sure whether she should tell Maddie that Gabby cheated on him and Lacey basically tells her that sometimes doing nothing is the right thing and maybe what Maddie does won't, you know, doesn't know, won't hurt him, and, you know, he, she really shouldn't be worried about this, and she shouldn't spend everything hung up on him, and I, I really like seeing that, I have to say. I thought that was definitely very well done, and, uh, basically, she asks Jenna what she wants to do, and, uh, about this, and she says they're gonna go for a spa day, and, that's basically what they plan on doing, and I like that she kind of told her, you know, put that all aside, don't focus so much on Maddie, focus more on yourself, focus on your senior year, and again, I don't think Jenna's focusing on Maddie, but she just wants to be a good friend, and, you know, she doesn't want to feel like she, she kept the secret from him, and she just doesn't want this to be another, uh, you know, Eva Amber situation where something really bad happened, he doesn't know, and he b gets really pissed off with her. She doesn't want that to happen again, so I can definitely see why Jenna's really upset about this, and I really like seeing that. So... Basically, Jenna and Tamara go to the spa, and she's talking to Tamara because she and you know she can tell that Tamara and Adam are still connecting, and she asks her if she told Adam that she doesn't want to be engaged yet. And Tamara says two things to her, which one I think was very interesting, and another that we expected. You know, she says she really wants to do it face to face. She doesn't want to tell him that she wants to break things off through text and things like that. But she also tells Jenna it's really not her concern. It's her life. She can control it. And a lot of people have said this is a dumb storyline, but I really like seeing because it's kind of Tamara doing her own thing. She's doing what she wants, and she's doing this because she wants to help out Adam and kind of wants to motivate him. And it seems like she wants this, and I think it's going to be interesting to see where this storyline goes. I definitely like that Tamara has a plot that doesn't revolve around Jake, and uh, it's something completely different. I definitely really like seeing this, and I think it's something that we really haven't tackled yet, and I think they're doing a really good job with it, I have to say. So, you know, basically Jenna thinks that Tamara does have a good point, and I really like seeing that. So then we basically see um, that Maddie now has this plan. He has a new senior prank because the last one obviously didn't go very well. The plan is to make this underwear flag. And uh, he seems to be the only one that really wants to pull it off and really wants to do it very well. But it just shows how, you know, how much uh, Maddie's looking forward to doing this. And I thought it was pretty funny to watch that. But basically, he wants to make this flag and he wants Jenna to be there and... Then we basically see, and, you know, I thought that was really interesting, but then we see Sadie talking to Sergio, who are officially a couple now. They're basically together now, of course. I don't remember if they were together before season four. I think they were, but I, I can't remember. Um, but basically, she's telling him about her mom, and again, we see Sergio really caring about Sadie, giving her that concern. Like I said, one of my favorite things of last season is Sergio giving that concern for Sadie, showing that he does care about her and wants to help her, and basically tells her that, look, I understand that you don't want to see her, but you at least need to give your mom a chance, and... I thought that was really good. I really like seeing that. I like Sergio telling her that you need to give her a chance and need to listen to what she has to offer because honestly, 
yeah, she could give her something that she has to offer, and I think Sadie should listen to her, and I think it was really good that Sergio gave her that advice. I definitely really like seeing that, and I like how Sadie now has someone who not only cares about her, not only wants to be with her and thinks of her, you know, very attractive and really loves her, but also is helping her, helping her, you know, getting her to care more, getting her to be less bitchy. I really love seeing it, and I think this storyline between Sergio and Sadie, I've said before that I really do love these two together, but I think that really is the reason why I really am loving this storyline between Sergio and Sadie, because it's really something that Sadie hasn't been through before. She had that guy, Austin, she did have him, but that was more of just a you know, quick thing that they had. This, I feel, is a lot more serious, and I really like seeing these two together, and I think it's really great. So, basically, while they're planning this prank, uh, Jay keeps asking Gabby when she's going to break up with Maddie, and Gabby says that she's starting to think Maddie really wants to make it work and that it's going to go well. But, of course, Jake knows that Maddie didn't want to, you know, d d basically wanted to break things off with her, and I kind of like how everyone's kind of in the dark about things. You know, Maddie's in the dark that he doesn't know that Gabby cheated on him, while Gabby's in the dark that she doesn't know that Maddie was going to break up with her. I, I definitely really like seeing that. And uh, again, you can just see that Gabby is starting to get these feelings towards Jake. She's flirting with him a lot. They're together a lot. And you can definitely tell that something is going to happen. You can just tell. This whole episode, we feel like we've been getting to something. So Jan decides to go on a date with Brian, which I like seeing. I like seeing her take things slow with Brian. But I really like the way they handled this, I have to say. And uh, they're planning on going on this date and everything. But Tamara and Adam then crash it. And... Uh, she tells them that they're double dating, and you think that... Now, I was thinking that Tamara was going to do this because she was going to tell Adam that she didn't want to be with him. The complete opposite happens. Basically, they go on a walk because Tamara and Adam, they're getting, like, really frisky. You know, they're getting, like, really sexual. They're starting to make out. They might have even had sex on the beach. I don't know. Um, but it was actually pretty funny to watch, I have to say. Um, they basically go on a walk to get away. But there really isn't a strong connection between them. You don't really have much. There's not much going on. And uh, it's just not really what they thought. And I like that we saw that because not every guy that Jenna meets has to be a love interest. And I think that's very realistic. Not every single guy that or every single girl you have a connection with is going to be you know, as good as what you think, and I think it's really well done the way they handle that. I know people are like, oh, this is just a way to get Jen and Maggie back together. Maybe they are setting that up, but I like that we saw that these two didn't have a connection, but it was completely very mature, which just they didn't have the same interests. They didn't want to be together. They might like each other as friends, but just not in the way that they thought, and I like seeing that. So she gets a text from Maddie saying that she shouldn't miss the prank they're pulling, and she thinks, you know what, yeah, I, I shouldn't miss it. You know, she decides that she wants to go. She doesn't want to miss out on basically her senior year experience or friendship, and just because of the guilt and mixed emotions that she feels. And I thought that was really great that she did that. It was a very mature situation, and definitely for Jenna, that was something I really enjoyed. You know, Jenna always second guesses herself, and I think in that moment, she's kind of thinking, you know what, there's not so much to worry about. It's my senior year. I need to to have fun. I only have a few days left. I need to go out. I need to have fun, and I need to enjoy it, and I think it's really great that she decided to do that. I thought it was definitely something I really enjoyed, and I thought they handled that very well. So, she arrives, and they pull off Maddie's prank, which is, of course, um, but then we see before that that Tamara and Adam have not broken things off. They've set a date for their, uh, for their wedding, and I was like, wow, they actually set a date for this thing, so this is either going to go really bad for them or really good. I don't know what's going to come out of this, but this is definitely going to be interesting to see what happens there. Um, but basically, they've now set a date, and, uh, We'll have to see where that goes, because I, I don't know what to make that. That's going to be very interesting, definitely. Um, So then Sadie is with Sergio. They're about to have sex. They're basically making out on the bed, and uh, Aunt Allie and her mother bust in, and she's like, whoever's not my boyfriend, get out. But uh, she tells her mother that she is willing to possibly make amends with her and possibly... Um, talk to her, and you see that Sadie, while she does have this distaste for her mother and doesn't really like her and doesn't really want much to do with her, she is willing to talk to her. She is willing to communicate with her, and I, I think that's really well done. I like the way they're handling that, and I think that was really good. I definitely like seeing that. 
Um, so basically they start off this prank, and, uh, I thought it was a pretty silly prank, and you can see the Theo and Cole, the whole time they're thinking, oh, you guys are amateurs, you have no idea what you're doing, they go to plan something, we don't know what they're planning, but they're planning something, uh, Brian also goes with them to this prank, and him and Maddie, like, show off their bodies, I thought it was pretty funny, actually, when they were doing that, uh, I definitely enjoyed that, but basically they see Maddie's prank, it's a flying flag made of underwear, it's, it's as funny as you can imagine, um, Basically, that's what happens there. And again, Gabby and Ma Gabby and Jake are just there talking, and they're getting close and everything. And uh, before this happens, Jenna and Brian, they basically, Brian leaves, and they tell each other that they will keep in touch, but it's not like it felt in Mexico. It's just a much more mutual feeling. It's simply just their friends. They're not, you know, lovers. It's not Jenna and Luke or Jenna and Maddie. They're just friends, and I, I like seeing that. Like I said, I like when Awkward does things that are very realistic, and this is something I think is very realistic, and they've handled it very well. I definitely like seeing that. So then we see, though, after this prank, that Val's, um, something of Val's, it's one of her cats, is covered in bubbles, and we don't know where this has come from. They go into the, um, go into the school, and it's covered with bubbles, and we realize that Theo and Cole pulled this off, and I've talked so much about how much I love Theo and Cole. They're awesome, and I really love seeing them pull things off. It's hilarious to watch, and they're like, oh, you guys were amateurs, and it's, it's really funny to see, definitely, um, but basically, in the moment, everyone's kind of having fun and enjoying it. And Maddie, see, uh, we see 47, but then there's only 46 days left. And things are going really great until Gabby and Jake are in this really heated argument. Because Gabby, again, doesn't want to tell, you know, Maddie what's going on. And Jake's yelling at her. And Gabby's just saying, you need to leave me alone. This is my relationship with Maddie. It doesn't matter to you. Why do you care so much? And then he basically tells her right then and there that Maddie was going to break up with her anyway, and uh, basically that's how that was going to go, and that he's still into Jenna, and she goes right up to Maddie, tells him that she had sex with Jake, and that she's breaking up with him, and that it's over, and basically Maddie punches Jake in the face, obviously he's pissed off at him, and uh, he just wants nothing to do with him, and then he sees the look on Jenna's face, and realizes that she knew, he leaves, and... Uh, Jenna basically realizes that not doing anything has ruined the situation, and that's basically how the episode ends. And I thought that was a really great way to end the episode, because now Jenna's in this situation where, does she get into it, does she not? I mean, it's a very complicated situation to get into. Do I interfere and, you know, try to help out Maddie, or do I just let him move past this? Because I think this is something that Maddie will move past, because let's face it, he never loved Gabby. He really didn't. He only was with, I think he was only with Gabby because he wanted a relationship, and the promos for this uh, season look very interesting, I have to say. I definitely like where we're going with a lot of these storylines. Uh, but let's talk a little bit more about this episode. Uh, Tamara and Adam, what are they going to do about this? Because obviously Tamara doesn't want this marriage, but I'm starting to think that she kind of does, actually. Like, the way she was acting with Adam, I kind of see this working out for them. If they really want to make this work, this could work. I mean, Adam talks like her. He acts like her. They seem perfect for each other. I do think this isn't going to last, but... I don't know. Maybe this will work out. We'll, we'll have to see where this goes. Tamara doing this, I think, is interesting, and I like how she's not letting Jenna tell her what to do, and I think she's just trying to wait for the right time on when to do this, and I think it's going to be interesting to see. I forgot to say, I did like the scene where um, the Julies told Jenna that uh, Brian was out of her league because he wasn't right for her. I like the way they handled that, definitely. Do you think they're going to communicate as friends? I do kind of see more interaction between them, but not a lot. We'll have to see what happens with that. Now, this whole thing between Jake and Maddie, do you think this has ruined Jake and Maddie's friendship? I really feel it has. I don't really feel they're going to be able to get back that great friendship that they used to have because they did used to have a fantastic friendship, and now it's kind of strained because of what Jake did with Gabby, and there's really nothing that Maddie that uh, he can do, I think, to fix this, unless Maddie is just like, you know what, I didn't really care about her anyway, but I don't know, is Maddie gonna react to this in a huge way? We'll have to see how this goes. It's gonna be very interesting to see what happens with that. Um, 
I like that Sadie is willing to reconnect with her mother. How is that going to go? Is she going to reconnect with her? Are they going to bond? You know, does her mother really, has her mother really changed and really does want to reconnect with her daughter? I'm interested in seeing where that storyline goes to because that, that definitely is going to be very interesting. I, I don't really know if her mother is sincere. That's the thing. I mean, I want to believe that her mother does want to reconnect with Sadie, but at the same time, I mean, her mother has said so many times, oh, I, I've changed. You can trust me and things like that. So how do we know that that she can trust her, that's going to be interesting to see if, if uh, she really is sincere about it because I'm not sure if she is. We'll, we'll have to see where that goes because that's going to be very interesting. Um, as far as this, as far as, uh, I, I love seeing Theo and Cole, as I said, I think that's going to be very interesting as well. Um, a lot of people are saying they're setting up getting Maddie and Jan back together. I can see that happening, but in the promos, I really love what they're doing this season. It looks like Maddie's going to become, like, unpopular and things like that, which I think is going to be very funny to watch. And, uh, we're going to see them go to prom, and he's going to take Sadie to prom, apparently, which I think is going to be interesting. Why not Sergio? I'm not sure. Because you can take, like, uh, people that aren't your date to prom, so they have to give a reason why. Um, do you think Val's gonna try to fix things with Will? I mean, I think she should at least, because it's probably the best thing for her to do, so we'll have to see where that goes. Do you think Jake and Gabby will have something? I do kind of see something happening between these two. However, if Jake really wants to continue his friendship with Maddie, he's gonna think, you know, bros before hoes. That, I think that definitely is what he's gonna think of, because... Yeah, he had a one-night stand with his best friend's girlfriend... But I don't think that he's going to continue his actions on. It did seem like they were building something, but I don't think he should because if he really wants to keep this thing with with uh, Maddie, if he really wants to be friends with him, he should just let it go and move on because that's probably the best thing for him to do and forget about because that's really how that should go. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, basically I uh, really enjoyed this episode. I thought this was a fantastic premiere. I really love uh, where they're going with this season. As I said, yeah, it's a continuation of last season. Yes, that didn't really feel like a season premiere. It felt very much like a mid-season premiere, which I'm fine with because they're just continuing. They're just finishing this part of the story and going on to the next part of the story, which I'm perfectly fine with. Do I may do I really want uh, more than a, you know? Uh, do I want more episodes after uh, the la the last ten episodes of Palos Hills? I'm not sure. I'll talk. I'll let you guys know that when we get to the graduation episode because that's really when I'll know if I wanted them to continue the show or not. Uh, but we'll have to see where that goes. But that's basically my review. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys thought this episode. Overall, guys, thought this was a fantastic premiere. Really did love it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Which will be uh, my review, which will be for a movie review, and then we'll see you guys for that. Actually, no, it'll be for the season finale of uh, the season of The Whispers, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.